In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a countdown timer inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, the previous method was quite limiting. You couldn't change the fonts. You couldn't really change the color without applying a tint effect. So this option is much easier and much more flexible. So let's get into it. So once you're inside of Adobe Premiere Pro and you've got a brand new sequence created, you first just want to begin by creating a new title. Now we're going to use the type tool to do this and you can just go ahead and select this T icon. But if you can't find this for any reason, then just press the T button on your keyboard and that will load up the type tool. Now from here, you just want to select anywhere in your sequence and we'll just start with our first number. So let's go 0010, for example. And basically what you want to do is create a line for every single number. Now, as you can see, this is quite time consuming, especially if you've got a really long countdown. And that's why I'm only starting from 10 seconds. So zero, zero, semicolon 10, then we'll make a new line. We'll go zero, zero, nine, zero, zero, eight, zero, zero, seven, zero, zero, six, zero, zero, oh, five. And then just keep working through. So. If I go through the vector motion, as you can see, we've got 0, 0, 10, and that works all the way down to zero seconds. So because we've got 10 seconds here, because 10 is our starting number, we want to make sure that this is 10 seconds long. So we'll go to the 10 second mark. So check the time code, 10 seconds, and we'll drag this over to 10 seconds like this. There we go. Now from here, you want to go ahead and make another text layer. So with the type tool now selected, we'll just go ahead and type anywhere here and we'll go zero, zero, 010. And then from there, you just want to make sure that all of this is centered up. So we're going to the text layer, make sure this is all centered. And then if that's not in the center for any reason, then just feel free to pull this down. So that should be roughly in the center now. And then we'll just make sure that this is the full duration of the 10 second timer. And then from there, we'll go back to the very beginning and we'll just grab this longer text layer. We'll go into vector motion and we'll pull the position of this down and into that center. So make sure that that is now perfectly in the center. So 0010 is now sitting exactly there. Now we'll create a brand new keyframe on the position on that vector motion. Make sure you're using the vector motion here, by the way, not motion, because if you're using motion, when you move the position up, it's going to chop off. But when you use vector motion, you get all of those numbers. So we'll create a brand new keyframe on the position on vector motion. Then we'll go to the very end of that minus one keyframe and we'll pull the vector motion up so that zero zero is now in the very center. Then you just want to zoom in on that last keyframe and then just budge that over to the very end. So let's play this back. There you go. You can see we've got all of these numbers now animating in. So at this point, we can now get rid of this zero zero ten because we were just using that as reference. Now from here, we'll just go ahead and make a mask around this number here. So this middle number here. So we'll go motion, opacity, select the freeze your bezier, and we'll just draw this mask around this number here, like this. Now, when we play this back, you can see we've got this sliding timer effect, and that does kind of work. That kind of looks like a wheel is animating around. And if that's the effect that you want, great, carry on. But that's not the effect that I'm looking for. Instead, I want it to flick from 10 to 9 to 8, so it looks like it's cutting. So in order to do that, we'll select that layer. We'll go into effects and search for posterize time. Make sure you're not selecting posterize, by the way, make sure you're selecting posterize time. We'll drop that onto that text layer. And then in posterize time on the left, you can see frame rate is 24. Drop this to one. And as you can see, that has worked exactly how we needed it to work. Essentially, posterized time is changing the frame rate. So if I was to set the frame rate to 12 frames per second, you can see that movement still there. It's just a bit more choppy. If I do that to six, the same thing applies. That movement's there. It's still sliding up, but it's more choppy. But because this is animating every second, if we set the frame rate to one frames per second, we're not going to see that movement. We're only going to see the text in the very center like this. Even if I change this to two frames per second, you're still going to see that slide up motion like this. So make sure your posterized time is set to one. And when we play this back, you can see we've got this perfect countdown timer now created inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. Of course, though, at the moment, we've just got the one color. We've got the one font. How do you change this? Well, just go ahead and select that title layer. We'll go into our text layer. So text 00110 and all of that business. And we can just change the font. So let's go monster at bold. 
And as you can see, nothing has happened. And that's because I haven't highlighted it. So we'll just select that layer. We'll go Command A to select everything. And that is on Mac. If you're on Windows, I believe that is Control and A or Control Alt and A. And then from there, we can go ahead and change the font to Monstrat in this example. We'll change the fill color to white. Now, as you can see, if I change the scale of this font down like this, if I was to play this back, you can see the effect is starting to ruin. We're starting to see multiple numbers coming in and some numbers are being chopped off and it doesn't look great. So instead, don't change the size of the font there. We'll go ahead and nest this in a second and then you can change the size of this nested sequence down to reduce the scale. I'll get onto that in a moment. But before we do that, I just need to look at this. So as you can see, because we've got a slightly larger font, that's creeping into that mask. So in order to stop this text from cutting off, we need to go into that mask and we just need to expand this over to the left and the right. Like this. So let's play this back. As you can see, that looks great. So let's move on to that scaling issue. So now that we're happy with the look of this, we can just go ahead and right click. We'll go nest. Feel free to rename this if you want. We'll just call this countdown. And then from there, you can now go ahead and change the scale down and you can pop this wherever you want this to go. So let's put this in the bottom right corner. And there you go. That is how you create a more customizable countdown timer inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. The first option, the previous tutorial that I did on this, it does work. The time code feature does work, but it is quite limiting. This one takes a little bit more time, unfortunately, but it is more customizable. So if you wanted to change the font or you wanted something very specific, then this is the option that you would take. But there you go. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.